Hey everyone, the name is Rick Dorn. Today's question is, will NTs save or will they doom the world? And what brought on this question is because I've read a lot of non-fiction about science and about not, uh, the progress of humanity and about global trends, about climate change, sustainability and other issues in the world. And I think a common trope is that it's the idealist that will change the world. You know, there's a lot of books out there calling idealists to action. Books that talk about how we need to work on our morality, our spiritual development and our human, human behavior towards one another. We need to work to end conflicts, create peace and all that. However, a lot of these books miss the NTs, you know. I believe NFs play a crucial important role in tackling social problems and issues in our society like conflicts between different groups in society, helping us restore bonds and bring more harmony between one another. But I believe it's NTs that need to respond to the primarily technological problems we face today. And a lot of the problems we face today are technological. A lot of them have to do with the innovation in work life, the increased effectiveness, the manufacturing of robots and AI and smart technology, uh, the increased redundancy of the normal average worker and human being in comparison to, for example, an effective and smart robot. I think a lot of the issues we face today have to do with primarily technological problems such as climate change that is a result of our technology and our ability to use fossil fuels to basically drive the world forward. You know, it's fossil fuels that created industrialization and that brought us a lot of the technology and the status and the wealth we have today, but it's also fossil fuels that are slowly bringing us towards increased temperatures and an increasingly uninhabitable world. So it's technology that is playing the primary role in providing more food to the human world, you know, helping populations grow, creating smarter cities, all that. But it's also technology that is creating more and more uninhabitable sor uh, sources, you know, sh uh, tearing down rainforests and uh, polluting rivers and so on and so on, you know. In one way you could argue this technology is not truly intelligent, a technology that brings waste, a technology that uh, cannot be decomposed, a technology that cannot be recycled, a technology that cannot be used effectively, that creates spills, that creates problems from other ends. This is not smart technology. But this is technology, and this is the technology that we are largely dependent on today. And the question is, what do we do without it? How do we truly change the world? How do we truly create a sustainable world while people keep wanting to fly, while people keep wanting to eat meat, while people keep wanting to drive cars? You know, some of the three biggest... Uh, sources of fossil fuels and of climate change are integral parts of our lifestyle and what we do. So we buy stuff and that creates an increase of fossil fuels and it creates more pollution. We drive cars, we take flights, we go on trips and while doing all of this we contribute all individually towards the doom of the planet. And you know, I think when you're an NT, like the first thing you have to do is you have to go through a period of an awakening. One NT he told to me he became involved in climate change and sustainability uh, as an engineer when he traveled to South America and he saw huge piles of trash everywhere. And he realized that he thought technology was a good, you know, a fundamental good. He thought that technology was bringing and saving the world. Up until that point, until he saw those huge mountains of trash and all the destruction it caused and all the devastation it caused, he thought technology was in itself always something positive and technology would always make the world a better place. But when he 
came here and when he saw all those things, he noticed that technology also had its issues. He realized that the world wasn't all perfect, that we haven't had all our ideas yet, that we haven't been completely intelligent, that we haven't been completely effective, that we haven't thought about things truly efficiently, truly pragmatically. We haven't taken responsibility for our own tools and that's an NT awakening for you. What NTs have to work on is increasing their sense of wisdom and insight into how technology is used and how the world operates and how the systems in the world interact, knowing the problems and issues that technology causes, knowing what needs to be improved and fixed if we want to create a sustainable world. Beyond that, what NTs need to develop is a sense of responsibility. Responsibility is very important when you're thinking type, you know, feeling responsible for the systems and how the systems in place work and how they are enf enforced. What rules we set, what rules we live by as producers of technology and consumers of technology, what responsibility we take for our own actions and for our, the mechanics we partake in. An important part of NT awakening is truly awakening as a seeker as well and actually taking a journey, you know, traveling, actually seeing, actually reading books, actually enlightening yourself, actually pursuing novelty, actually learning about new ideas, actually visiting and talking to people from different societies and systems about how different systems work and how they can work better, actually searching and learning and seeking novelty and seeking insight, more insight than what you can purely find on your own. What an NT also needs to foster, and I think this one is very, very important, that is also a belief in uh, magic and in the impossible. I don't believe in the religious notion of magic necessarily, that you need to believe in God or that you need spirituality or something like that, but what I do need, to, what you do need is a belief that it's possible to do the impossible. You know, realizing that the impossible is everything we haven't done yet. So it can be done, we just haven't done it yet, you know. What an NT needs and what can truly help an NT grow is that feeling that nothing is truly impossible and there might be a way to do anything. We tend to think that what we have now is the way, you know. The, we get so trapped in the practical aspects of how society is set up and how it already works that we miss all the possibilities that lay before us. You know, that's an issue. We cannot see the future. We have no idea what's gonna happen. And so we get stuck in a bubble where we think that everything good has already been done. We thought it in the 15th century, we thought it uh, in the 5th century, and we think it now again. We think everything good has already been done. Everything great has already been solved. Every good idea has already been had. Every great philosophy, every great insight has already been written down somewhere. So there's nothing more for me to do, nothing more for me to say, nothing more I can do. But then again, that's not true. And I think uh, an important part of NT awakening is uh, that development that, wait a second, there's more. There's obviously more. And there's obviously something I can do here. If I can learn to think about the impossible and to entertain the impossible, if I can explore the improbable, if I can test out a hypothetical, if I can see through an idea or run an experiment or change things around a little, maybe I can do something truly remarkable. And I believe, and this is another part of NT awakening, another important part of NT awakening is getting to work. Going to work, actually innovating, actually putting yourself out there, actually doing your best at something, working your ass at something, truly trying your hardest at doing it better than anybody has done it yet before you. Actually going in and becoming an innovator, actually seeing ways to do things better, actually learning about and trying out and seeing if there's smarter ways to do things. Yeah, take those breaks 
and spend those breaks, you know, trying out new things, you know, get out of the normal workflow and the routines at work where you're blindly hammering on the keyboard, doing and following the instructions and see if there's a smarter way to do something. Think about what am I doing right now and can I do it better? Are there any other tools I could create to solve this issue? Is there anything I can do with this to do it smarter? And uh, here's another very important thing. That's, it has to do with perfection. And I think perfection is, uh, true perfection is impossible. There's always a better way. There's always a smarter way. There's always something you can improve at. But perfection is also an inspiration or it can be a sense of inspiration because it can also be a signal that there is more. There is something, there is an ideal way for everything to work together, for every component to work at its optimal efficiency, for every person in the group to perform at their absolute best. There is a degree of that is perfect, something we can do that is fundamentally perfect. And... Uh, that definition will always change as well as long as we keep inventing new systems a new definition of perfect will emerge as soon as a new component arrives everything around it changes so perfection is never true perfection is never possible but it is maybe possible for a second for a brief second or for a little moment there it is possible and that one second is worth it that one second matters that one second where everything truly works and where everything truly is in the right place. Because that also sets a benchmark to strive towards a goal that is worth working hard for. I don't believe NTs are truly challenged enough in today's society. I don't believe schools inspire adequately NTs to truly think outside the box. I believe most schools foster a blind obedience where we are forced to learn what we already know, but never to investigate or research what there's yet to find out. I believe it takes way too long before a person actually hits the level where they are given independence and freedom to pursue their own ideas. And I believe we are killing intuitives as we put them through 25 to 30 years of obedience before they can allow them independence of mind. And I believe we are unreasonably afraid of letting people free and letting people explore new areas and new aspects, especially when it comes to kids because it is uh, in that stage when we are the youngest that our minds is also the most clean. You know, our slate is the most clean in our youngest years. We are the most free to think and to truly entertain impossible when we are at our youngest. And I don't believe we need experience before we can improvise. I believe improvisation and experiments can lead to experience. I believe we need more rallying books and uh, non-fiction literature and more campaigns to raise and engage NTs in the race of technology, creating an AI that is moral and reasonable and intelligent, actually intelligent intelligent enough to support human beings rather than kill them or take away their resources or use them. I believe uh, NTs need to be challenged as well to find more intelligent systems where people can think without fake facts, without fake numbers. NTs need to work on illuminating accurate insight and accurate facts, helping shed light on all the, the fake news out there and all the lies out there and all the bullshit out there. NTs need to help us uh, truly think bigger and uh, so an important aspect is I guess thinking about your pitfalls as an NT. 
So the question was, can entities doom the planet? Can entities in their progress of innovation create innovation that is destructive or harmful or that will eventually make things worse for all of us? Can entities uh, design the bombs that will surpass the atomic bomb and that will truly destroy the whole world? Can entities develop the AI that will eventually enslave or kill humanity? taking our place on Earth? Can NTs think of uh, increasingly effective ways to exploit the planet, starving it of natural resources? Can NTs think of increasingly effective ways to create and run wars? creating maximum casualties. Those are some of the questions uh, that are a little bit more dark in their nature and that uh, ask us, you know, about the moral responsibilities of what we do. And, you know, most brilliant NTs gain this level of insight only after they have succeeded in innovation. One person, a perfect example is Albert Einstein, who only after his ideas realized the responsibilities he had for his own creations and for their moral and humane use. So what I'm hoping is we have hit the level of human consciousness today that is smarter than in the 1950s, where we start thinking about the moral responsibilities of our ideas before we start executing and developing them and where we start programming in these uh, human humane liber limitations and start using that to create more effective ideas that will eventually save the planet making it a better place for everyone rather than one of war conflict and out of control climate change. So thanks all NTs and everyone else for tuning in and watching and let me know in the comments down below what you think is the biggest technological challenge we are faced with today and let me know how you as an NT are working to make the world a better place and what you think about the issues of technology and morality. Is there a conflict? Is technology innately good or bad? And how can we think about this and respond to these things as NTs and as NFs and SFs and STs? Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in the next video.